Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another video as part of my mental health series and for this one I wanted to talk about my experiences of being sectioned. Um, I don't want this video to... I wouldn't say put people off being sectioned but I don't want this video to scare people about being sectioned or to make it sound like a horrible experience I mean yes it's not going to be a nice experience but basically I just want to say that these are this is just my experiences and my perception of what was happening at the time um, I was obviously very mentally unwell so how I perceived things may not have been how they were in reality if that makes sense um, but I thought I just needed to say, needed to say that first because obviously there's going to be a lot of people out there who have been sectioned or who may be sectioned at some point and I don't want it to be... I don't want to scare people about it basically because, you know, it is a necessary thing sometimes. Um, if anyone doesn't know what being sectioned means, it basically means that you are admitted to a psychiatric hospital against your consent basically um it's a legal thing and they have to draw up contracts and things like that for it um but basically you are taken to hospital and admitted to hospital um without you having to give any consent for that to happen um so as i said this is just going to be my experiences i'm not a professional or anything like that i'm just someone who has been through it and who wants to share their experience because it's not something that is talked about much at all before it happened to me I don't think I'd ever spoken to anybody about it or heard anything about it and I think it's important to raise awareness of the whole process and the needs for it um, and also just to help other people understand like what that process is because for me it was quite a scary experience because I just I didn't I didn't know what was happening and I had never yeah I'd never encountered it before so I want people to understand it a bit more and not necessarily feel afraid of it or judgmental about it you know I'm sure there's people out there who will hear of someone being sectioned and will have quite judgmental views on that you know of that person for whatever reason and I just want people to understand it a bit more I think and to talk about how I experienced it. So yeah I've actually been admitted to a psychiatric hospital twice. The first time was when I was 17 um, and when I was admitted that time I actually went like voluntarily. It was up to me and my parents obviously um, so there was no section or anything at that point because I had made that decision in collaboration with my treatment team that that was kind of the best process for me. So I won't talk about that so much because the two experiences were completely different. Um, but the second time I went into a psychiatric hospital was back in 2012 um, and that was the time that I was sectioned. So I guess I'll just talk to you a bit about the sort of lead up to it just to so that you can understand where I was at that point. Um, so basically my physical health had been getting a lot worse. At that point I had had a diagnosis of ME, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, but even then the doctors didn't, didn't think that that was probably the correct diagnosis, but they didn't know what was. Um, so no one really knew what was going on with my physical health. Now I've been diagnosed with ehlers danlos Syndrome and various other things. Um, but, at that, but at the time, um, I didn't have any of those diagnoses. So we were very much like in the dark. So yeah, 2012, like beginning of 2012, I started to get much more unwell. Um, I just wasn't keeping food down or it was just going straight through me. And I was losing weight quite quickly. Um, not on purpose at that point it just my physical health was not good basically um so kind of throughout the sort of first part of 2012 i went through a lot of hospital tests and 
I don't know, I had blood tests, I had um, various like gastro tests and yeah to try and get to the bottom of like what was causing these problems and nothing was showing up with any kind of answers um you know i was back and forward to the doctor because my symptoms were just getting worse i was getting more and more unwell um more weak because i was losing weight and i wasn't like taking in food properly um and so physically i was becoming like really unwell um and that just went on for what felt like what well, was months to be honest it went on for months and i had kind of lost i was losing the will to fight because every time i had a test it was coming back saying everything was fine when obviously it wasn't um and we were kind of getting to a point where my gastroenterologist was struggling to know what to do with me um and they weren't really taking it as seriously as we felt they should be. Um, so yeah, I'd had a, uh, what had I done? Oh yeah, I'd had like um, a colonoscopy, which is where they put a camera like into your digestive system to have a look around. That had caused a few problems and I'd ended up being admitted for like a week into the general hospital. Um, and I kind of didn't feel like I was treated particularly well um i mean yeah like physically they tried to look after me and stuff but i had felt like by that point they'd made up their minds that they thought it was all in my head and that i was causing my symptoms and that yeah it was it was all in my head basically and so a lot of the staff's attitudes towards me i felt were quite negative or not negative just completely like disbelieving quite sort of blase they just I just felt like they didn't want to be treating me they didn't want me there um I was sent home more ill than when I'd gone in to be honest because I was yeah I was losing more and more weight um but they didn't really seem that bothered um and then I can't remember time scales but I went back to see my consultant as an outpatient and at that point she took one look at me and she was just like you need to come into hospital um you're severely underweight i don't know what's going on but we need to try and get some nutrition in you and at least try and get you kind of stabilized so i went home after that appointment and then the day after i went back into hospital again and um to start with i kind of felt a bit more positive about it because she said there's some more tests we can do um I was given an NG tube, which is a feeding tube that goes into your nose and then down into your stomach. Um, they put that in, which was not very pleasant, but it needed doing. Um, yeah, so they put that in and wanted to start me on feeds and they wanted to start me on like a very, very broken down feed, which basically meant my body had as little work as possible to do to digest the food that was going into me. Um, I had some arguments with them when I went in because my consultant had said that she wanted me to be exclusively tube fed for a bit um, but that hadn't been communicated when I came in and my consultant wasn't there so when I told them that that's what she'd said a lot of the staff didn't believe me they thought that I was trying I don't know I don't know what they thought they thought I had an eating disorder at that point and that I was trying to get out of eating um, and that really wasn't the case I was just trying to do what my consultant had said um, but eventually that kind of got sorted so I had the NG tube put in and then they kind of carried out a few more tests over the weeks of me being in um, and again all these tests were just coming back with nothing they they were coming back clear showing that everything was fine and my mental health was starting to get worse because of this because every time a test came back they said well we still can't find anything wrong with you like there's nothing there's nothing wrong with you and you know myself and my parents were both like well yes there is something's not right um and with every test that went past the doctors were kind of saying well we're running out of things to to look for um you know maybe you've just just got ibs um and we were like yeah but you know even if it is just IBS you still need to treat it because 
it's obviously making me really unwell. But because of the attitude, their negative attitude, what I felt was a negative attitude and what my parents felt was a negative attitude towards me, um, and because they were starting to suggest that maybe it was a mental illness instead and that there wasn't anything physically wrong with me, um, it really just impacted my mental health and I think it would with anybody to be honest but I think because I'd been through so much already and so much fighting I was just my I, well my body was breaking but also I felt like my brain was breaking like I just couldn't I was losing the will to fight and I just I felt so ill and it was it just got to the point where I was like I don't think I want to carry on anymore um because no one could tell me what was wrong, nothing was getting any better and then they were starting to talk about discharging me from hospital with no real plan and I was like, but that, how is that going to help? I'm just going to go home and I'm going to get even worse and my parents were really not happy about it um, but we just did not feel listened to and I was getting more and more unwell and then they said, okay, well we're going to take the NG tube out now you just need to go back to eating and I was like but you haven't you haven't done anything nothing's been made any better so how is this going to change anything and i just really could not understand their reasoning um but they wouldn't listen to what i said or what my parents said they took my ng tube out and by this point i was quite mentally unwell as well as being physically unwell because of the toll that everything like all the physical stuff had taken on me i just I was broken pretty much is it the only way I can describe it um so they took my NG feeding tube out and I kind of just shut down I've got quite sort of sketchy memories of it because I really wasn't very well um and I don't know it wasn't necessarily a conscious decision or certainly not a an informed conscious decision but they took my NG tube out and I just thought I can't I can't carry on, I'm not going to bother eating, what is the point, I might as well just die. Um, and so I refused to eat anything, I refused to drink anything, um, and yeah, I'd already had trouble with eating disorders in the past and I, I had already told them that I needed help with that side of things as well because I'd lost so much weight it had been quite a trigger for my eating disorder thoughts and I said to them before they took my NG tube out I said please can you get me some help because I can feel things getting worse eating disorder depression type wise and I said if I don't get help soon I just think I'm going to get worse and worse um, but as with any mental health help unfortunately it isn't quick and they said yeah yeah we'll, we'll refer you to the eating disorder service and the eating disorder service came back with an appointment that was like three months down the line and my dad was like well if we leave her for three months she's gonna be dead um but no one was listening to us and it was so frustrating um but by this point i yeah they'd taken the eating the feeding tube out and i was refusing to eat or drink i mean i say like refusing I just, I wasn't even, I don't know, acknowledging it or, I, I was so like zoned out that I, I just couldn't even think about eating, I wasn't even like, oh yeah, I wasn't thinking straight basically, um, so I went for quite a few days, let's just put it that way, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I went quite a few days without eating anything, um, and in this point the eating disorder, eating disorder service had got involved and um, I had gone, they, my parents had taken me over for an appointment with them and they had basically said to me we will only take you on to our day patient um, program if you start to eat. So I was like well, I was like yeah but that's the whole problem, like I'm struggling, like, I, I, I can't eat, like physically it's making me ill and mentally it was just like there was this block and I was like I can't I can't eat like that's what you're meant to help me with and they were like well we can't help you unless you start eating and I was just like this this doesn't make sense um so they said right well we'll give you I think it was like 48 hours or something to start eating again and if you don't then we won't help you 
so I went back to the, ho the general hospital and um, nothing changed I was still in the same place I couldn't I couldn't even think about eating and it was horrible like thinking back to it now thinking how what I put my parents through and I wasn't a particularly nice person because I'd got so consumed by my eating disorder and my mental health and my physical health was also really bad so it was it was a horrible time um but I was obviously getting more and more unwell because I wasn't eating and they had just about managed to put drips into me to keep me kind of well to stop me from going into a coma basically because I kept kind of slipping in and out of consciousness um because my blood sugar levels were getting so low um and I, so I didn't want them to put the drip in me to be honest and I kept saying that I didn't want it um and I don't I don't even know if I agreed in the end but it happened um so yeah I kind of had the 48 hours and then went back to the eating disorder service for another meeting with them so at this point I really wasn't with it I don't know how else to explain it I was not of sound mind at all and they said you know have you eaten anything and I said no um, and they kept asking questions like why and I I just couldn't even explain why like I don't know I didn't even I didn't understand myself I just knew that I'd had enough I couldn't cope I couldn't go on I couldn't keep going with all these like physical health problems and the only way that I could see to stop that and to get out of that was to just stop doing everything, stop eating, stop drinking, stop interacting with the world, to literally just sleep until I was not here anymore. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't verbalise that, I couldn't explain it very well, and they kept asking me all these questions and stuff, and basically my dad was then called in to the meeting room with us, and I remember the consultant there saying, I can't remember what her words were, but she said something along the lines of that they were going to have to section me, basically. And it, the words she used, I didn't, I didn't understand, so I didn't, I didn't know that that's what was happening. Um, but I just remember, remember my dad getting very upset, but he agreed basically that that's what needed to happen um, because he'd already said that I couldn't go home because basically if I did like I would have just ended up straight back in A&E again um, so he then had to take me back to the general hospital again and to section someone is quite a I wouldn't say a lengthy process it's a a formal process basically so I think it's three different professionals have to agree that sectioning is the correct thing to do or certainly this was how it was when it happened to me. So the eating disorder consultant had already kind of signed it off as hers. Um, I then had to go back to the general hospital and we had to, they had to get two other parties involved to make the decision. So I remember then being seen by a psychiatrist, possibly the hospital psychiatrist, I have absolutely no idea, um, and he asked various questions, again, I just, I just felt so confused, like nothing was making sense in my head, I, I don't know, like, I felt like everyone was out to get me, I was just really not well, I was in self-destruct mode, basically, um, so whatever answers I gave to him, obviously, made him convinced that I needed sectioning as well so he signed it off and then um social services came along I think there was like a team of quite a few people came along who I believe were social workers social services um and again I remember going getting taken to a room to talk to them and I so vividly remember like them asking me questions and I was explaining my answers but they obviously I don't know whether I wasn't explaining it properly or whether they were pushing it a bit just to like see how, what I was sort of saying um but I just really vividly remember like them sort of saying to me well like you know why won't you eat and I was just like well I can't 
and they were like well why and I was like I, I just can't and I was really trying to like explain this to them and I couldn't understand why they didn't get it um like looking back now I can I can see it but at the time I just I felt so confused they were they kept asking all these different questions and I felt like they kept trying to like catch me out and stuff and I think that was just because I was so unwell that my perception of what everyone else was doing was very very skewed and yeah I thought everyone was out to get me and everyone was I don't know I don't even know what I thought people were trying to do but I just I didn't feel like I trusted anybody and yeah I felt like all these questions they were just trying to like catch me out or something um so after I'd seen them um they obviously signed off as well to say that yes I think they I needed sectioning um and they came and told me that I was going to be sectioned and I was going to be taken to a psychiatric hospital and I feel I was I remember being really upset because I didn't really, I still didn't understand what was going on, but I knew that I'd kind of lost my choice. I didn't, you know, this, I was being told that this is what is going to happen and you can't do anything about it. Um, and I remember one of my, um, one of the registrars, the gastro registrars came up to me and I'd gotten really well with her. And I remember just bursting into tears and I really really appreciated what she did because she just she sat with me for a minute and she was just like it's okay like you're gonna be all right and no one had really done that like it had all been so formal and just overwhelming and scary and confusing so for her to just come over and sit next to me and like give me a bit of a hug and just be like it's okay don't worry like you know it's all you're all right you're gonna be looked after that meant an awful lot um and at this point like my parents weren't there like I think they'd been contacted but I was on my own and yeah I was terrified because I had no idea like what was coming um and then I sort of I was like I've got my stuff together and whatnot and these two um paramedics arrived and they said oh we're here to take you to the hospital and I was like yeah my mum's not here like why can't can I not just go with my mum and basically they said no you can't go with your mum you have to go in an, in an, an ambulance um and I'm guessing that's so that they can make sure that they get you to the hospital because you're now under a section um and also in case you're a danger to someone else or yourself they have to kind of manage that risk I suppose but yeah at the time I was just I just didn't understand why my mum couldn't just drive me down the road to the hospital um and the fact that she wasn't there and they were just coming to take me I was like I can't I need my mum here like I don't want to be taken away on my own like I don't know where I'm going I don't it was dark outside and I was just like please please can we wait for my mum to arrive and thankfully they said we we could and she got there and like gave me a hug and kind of said that I would be all right and stuff and um they said to her that she could follow in her car um and like <laughs> I mean the general hospital and the psychiatric hospital were literally down the road from each other but they kind of had to follow protocol I guess but yeah so I was like bundled into this ambulance um and that's like was it the first time I've been yeah I think it's like the first time I've been in an ambulance for me anyway um and I was like, I was scared, like really scared, I'm not gonna lie, like, you know, I'd just been like plucked out of this general hospital where I'd been for like six weeks or something, um, put in the back of an ambulance, and to be, and to be fair, like the paramedics were lovely, um, but I had no idea what I was going to, and yeah, I was terrified I had no one with me because my mum was having to follow in the car behind um so yeah they kind of got me into the ambulance and then as we drove there the one of the paramedics that was like in the back with me had to fill in um like a sheet and ask like various questions I can't I've no idea what the questions were but I just remember them asking them um and we kind of pulled up into the hospital and 
Um, I couldn't see anything because there's no windows in the back of the ambulance. Um, but when I got out, it was dark so I couldn't really see very much, but the place just looked so run down, like loads of bits of it were like shut up because they weren't being used anymore. Um, and thankfully I don't think much of that hospital was actually used anymore, I think a new one was built. Um, but at the time I just got there and I was like, where the hell have you brought me? Like it honestly, it was so run down and old and like falling apart, it was, it was horrible, I was like, what the heck is this? Um, and so they took me to, you like go to the front door and basically it's like they buzz through one door and you come in to like a little like bit, the door behind you shuts and then there's another door in front that they can then open so it's like kind of almost like an airlock I guess um, and it's obviously a security measure but I felt like I was being taken into prison, that's how it felt because I mean there was, well there were so many like security measures and just that whole like having to get into past one door and shut that door behind you and then being stuck in this little bit and then them over having to unlock the other door and lock it behind them again. It was, it, it was a weird experience. Um, and we were met by one of the nursing staff I think and she basically said oh it's, it's handover time like we can't deal with you now. Um, can you go and sit in this room over here? So we got let into this room and it was literally no, no bigger than a cupboard. Um, and we got sort of put in there and thank God I was with my mum otherwise it would have been even more horrible. Um, but yeah we got put in this room and they just basically said to us like can you just wait here and we'll come and deal with you when we've finished doing the handover. So we sat there for a good half hour at least and didn't really know what to say to each other. Um, I was exhausted because I hadn't eaten for so long and all of a sudden I'd had all this like movement and doing stuff and it had completely taken it out of me. Um, but eventually um, two people came into the room. One was a doctor and one was a nurse I think. Um, and they sat down with us and started asking me loads of questions and by this point it was 10, half 10 at night, something like that, maybe even later. Um, but yeah, we, we started this full-blown like interview um, asking me all sorts of questions about my mental health, about my eating, about what I'd been in hospital for previously, everything you could possibly think of. And I remember them, they, she brought, the nurse brought in a glass of water and handed it to me. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm all right, thank you. And I just remember her going, you will drink it. And I was like, I was like oh, okay. And she sat there and watched me while I drank it. And she said, she kind of said like, you know, you, you're gonna start drinking and, and eating now that you're here. Um, otherwise you'll just be back in A&E again or something. I can't remember exactly. And she wasn't being like horrible. She was just being like, this is what's got to happen. Um, and yeah, so we had this long old interview. They did a physical, the doctor did a physical examination to like check me over and stuff. Um, and then once all that was done, and I also think I had to sign some like legal paperwork. I can't, I can't actually remember. Um, once that was done, they, looked through all my bags, like took everything out and searched them, gave my mum stuff that I wasn't allowed to have with me. Um, and then they basically said to my mum, okay, you need to go now, we're gonna take her to her bed. Um, and I just really didn't want my mum to go. I was really upset and I just remember like walking down the corridor and it was really dark because most people were in bed. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just the weirdest experience and I got taken to a little sort of cubicle. It was in like a dormitory is all I can describe it as. We had like a wall between the beds but then like a curtain across. Um, and literally in your, in my room there was a bed, a wardrobe that didn't have like any kind of hanging, like you couldn't hang anything in it basically, and a chair and that was it. Um, 
they told me where the toilets were and then I think I was put on constant observation so I had someone sitting in the chair with me, I can't even, or maybe they let me go to, I can't actually remember, um, I certainly had like regular obs if, if I wasn't on constant observation and they kind of told me to get into bed and just go to sleep um, which is much easier said than done when like all this is happening around you um, and I just remember being so cold um, and they could obviously see because I was literally like shaking and they kept just bringing me more and more blankets to try and warm me up um, and I mean it was cold, even my mum said it was freezing in there because it was such an old building um, but I was absolutely freezing and basically they had put me on bed rest because I hadn't eaten anything they said I needed to be on bed rest until I started eating um, so yeah I I think I started trying to go to sleep and then they came in with more paperwork that I had to sign I had to say whether I wanted um, to see a lawyer um, or anything like that because you can um, appeal your section if you don't believe that it's right so I had to like try and sign all that kind of stuff as well and then I think I tried to get a little bit of sleep that night um, it definitely wasn't easy because certainly this psychiatric hospital wasn't a very quiet place there was a lot of noise which was quite scary noise like people screaming and shouting and just not what I was used to at all um, but I think I did manage to get a little bit of sleep that night in the end but even kind of when I managed to get some sleep I kept being woken up every few hours because they wanted to check my blood sugar levels to make sure that it wasn't dropping too much and I was basically having that done I was having my pulse checked, my blood pressure checked like all sorts of different things like quite regularly and yeah it went on quite a long time it felt like and then the next morning they brought in some breakfast for me and I was like I don't know what I don't know if I can do this I'd for so long I hadn't eaten it was getting to the point where I didn't know how to start again but at the same time I think being sectioned had given me a kick up the arse is all I can call it a reality check and I just thought to myself I I need to do something but, and I I can't remember if it was my dad or my friend one of my friends came in or something the first few days I was there and they basically said to me like we still believe you that there is something physically wrong but you need to get better mentally if you want to fight it and if you want to find out what is going on and get listened to and that kind of really stuck with me and that was my motivation I suppose to try and start eating and to try and get a bit better mentally um, definitely wasn't easy and the amount that I ate to start with was very small and they had to be quite careful because I'd not eaten properly for so long that they had to be really careful about refeeding and things like that um, but yeah the whole the whole being section thing I would say had positives and negatives it was a really difficult and scary experience and one that I still think about sometimes and I have nightmares about and flashbacks to and things like that um, but I also believe it was what I needed and I think if I hadn't been sectioned and I'd just been sent home I don't know if I would be here today um, because it just gave me that reality check that I needed to do something and to almost like not snap out of it because I definitely didn't snap out of it but to just think about what I was doing and what I was doing to people around me and what I was doing to myself and to think did I want is that what I wanted um it also put me in a place where I could get some psychiatric help um not necessarily what I needed or I think it was partly what I needed but I felt like I was almost telling them what I needed because they didn't deal with eating disorders um, because this was just a general psychiatric hospital because I apparently wasn't ill enough to go into a eating disorder inpatient unit but I was too ill to do eating disorder day patient treatment but that's another story um, 
so yeah they were trying their well they were in contact a little bit with the eating disorder team but I also was just telling them what help I felt like I needed and they tried to do that where possible um I was under quite close observations for the first like couple of weeks um and they just dragged so much those first few weeks um, because I wasn't really allowed to do anything. I was in bed a lot of the time. I was getting bed sores. Um, even like when I went to the bathroom, I had to be watched. It was it was not nice. Um, and the whole environment at that point was quite scary. It was very new to me. I didn't know what was going on. I was quite scared of some of the other patients. Um, not gonna lie, like. I think, I don't know, well, I'd be interested to hear if anyone else has been in a psychiatric unit and how you found being in a psychiatric unit because certainly to, at the beginning I told the staff on more than one occasion that I was scared for my safety and um, they were very good about it and they reassured me and, you know, told me as much as they could but obviously without breaking confidentiality about the other patient but... For those first few weeks definitely it was a really scary time. So with being sectioned as well, like I didn't have any freedom, um, I wasn't allowed to go out, there was a little garden and I don't even think I was allowed in that to be honest unless someone was with me. Um, I was sectioned like a week or two before my birthday. Um, and I was saying to them, oh, I'll be home, I'm going to go home before my birthday. And they were like, no, you're not. Um, so the section that I was under, I think, lasts for 28 days. There were different sections, but I was on like that one to start with, which is like the assessment phase. Um, and yeah, I wasn't allowed to go home. Um, I was allowed visitors, so I was quite lucky that I had my family coming to visit me and a few friends that came as well. Um, and yeah like for the first few weeks I just felt like I was in a prison um I kind of had magazines to read and that was about it I don't think I got dressed I was walking around in a bit of a kind of zombie state I think I was put on some medication um to see if that would help but yeah, that was about it. I did see, so I had a psychiatrist who I would see quite regularly um, and he had like the support staff and things like that. But yeah, the first few weeks I was just not, I felt like a zombie. Um, and then uh, because I had started eating and because I was starting to cooperate with um, the treatment and things like that, they said that for my birthday I could go to a local garden centre um, and basically we had to, they had to sign something and I had to sign something um, to say that I would be at this specific location and that I had to be back by a specific time. If I, They said if you don't get come back by that specific time we will call the police and get them to come out and get you, um, which obviously I didn't want, especially on my birthday. Um, so yes, it was very, very restricted and just completely not what I was used to at all um but yeah it was it was it was difficult <laughs> a really difficult time and I cried a lot and I just I felt really lost and I didn't really know what what I was doing or where I was going or you know I still have my physical health problems as well but I was trying so hard to like do like eat and listen to what the psychiatrist was saying and stuff so that I could get to a place where I was able to fight my physical health problems um after the first like couple of weeks I started to be allowed sort of a little bit more freedom so I wasn't watched so much I could kind of do my own thing a little bit more. I was still like had to stay in the hospital, but I could start going to like some of the occupational therapy groups. There wasn't a huge amount of activities planned for us. Like they did have occupational therapy during the week, um, 
but it was so different to what I'd been used to in an adolescent psychiatric uh, unit because that was so timetabled and so like organised whereas we had a lot of free time in the hospital when I was sectioned um, because it was an adult hospital um, so yeah I tried to do a bit of the occupational therapy stuff just to kind of pass the time a bit and get time moving because it just time went so slowly while we were in there um, and then I also started seeing a psychologist as well which was probably the most helpful thing while I was in there because I could actually start talking to someone and make sense of what had been going on and yeah that that was definitely like really valuable help that was um, I also started to make friends with some of the other patients um, and yeah we like would I found like a few that I kind of got on with and that was sort of maybe similar age group to me um, and like we had some quite like fun times like we'd play games and stuff and um, yeah it got it did get better like it still wasn't great but it did get better and then as time went on um, I started being allowed to have some home leave because obviously they want to work up to you going home so they want to start preparing you for that um and also as my section was coming to the end of like the 28 days um they had then had a chat with me about like what we were going to do next and because i had started complying with treatment and because i yeah because i was listening and because i was kind of doing what i was told um they agreed that I didn't need to be under section anymore so once my current section had run out um, I then stayed on for a little bit longer as a voluntary patient um, didn't really change anything to be honest like I still like had to ask if I wanted to leave and have home leave and all that kind of thing but I wasn't under section anymore um, and yeah like after a few more weeks um, they decided that I could then be discharged to start on a day patient eating disorder uh, plan, treatment plan. Um, and yeah, I was quite excited to go home because I just wanted to be back with my family and in somewhere a little bit more comfortable. But at the same time, as I was also quite nervous about being discharged because I'd spent so long in the general hospital and then being in the psychiatric hospital as well um I'd kind of forgotten what it was like to be at home and not to have people like around me 24 7 like looking out for me and looking after me and stuff so yeah going home was definitely a challenge but I think because I went straight on to the eating disorder day patient program that was so intense that it wasn't quite so it wasn't quite such a big jump of like just going home to nothing like I went to quite an intense program so yeah it wasn't as difficult as it could have been um and yeah that kind of is my sectioning story um I'd be really interested to hear your comments whether you've been sectioned whether you know someone that's been sectioned um also whether you've just got any questions about anything that I've spoken about I, I, I'm really happy to talk about anything to do with being sectioned or mental health or anything like that to be honest so please do ask questions or let me know if there's any other videos that would be helpful for me to make for you um, I'm happy to make yeah, any kind of mental health video um, anything more to do with sectioning that you'd want to know do just let me know because I find it really interesting to kind of hear what you guys want to see. Um, if it's something that you found interesting and it's something you want to see more of, please do give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate all your likes and subscriptions because it helps other people see the videos as well. Um, and yeah, it means a lot to me. So please do do that if you would like to. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.